Well, good morning. I think I'm owed an apology, miss. What for? What for? Last night, that's what for. I'm always having to flame and say I'm sorry. Well, this time I'm not. It's you who should apologise to me, you and me dad. Oh, I see. Why, exactly? You were supposed to spend the evening with me, not sneak off to your pals after half an hour. We came to your concert, we stayed till the end, and we came looking for you when it was over. To ask if you'd like to go for a hamburger out. But you were too busy with your mates. Fair enough. So we left a message for you to say we were going to pop into Alf Roberts' housewarming party, and that's where we'd be. And that's where you found us. And why you thought it necessary to stage a big scene and be rude to me and your father in front of all those people, I do not know. You didn't want to come, did you? You just felt guilty. That isn't true. Yes, it is. You didn't want to come. You don't want me to live here. You'd much rather be fair just the two of you. I just get in the road. I don't know where you get these daft ideas from. From looking at you and me dad, that's where. I'm not stupid, you know. Just wait till your dad comes back, Jenny Love. You'll be all right then, Jenny Love. You'll be a family again. You are. No, we're not. Not with you setting your cap at him. I haven't even seen him for eight rotten years. It was me who was coming to see. Me who was getting to know, not you. Whoa, brilliant. Ah, that was probably a wrong number. Your big ugly plates of meat. Oh, somebody wanting a cremation. I've had a few of them recently. I reckon we must have a similar number to an undertaker's. Not the only thing that'll be similar to an undertaker's round here if we don't start getting some flaming work. If it was work, he'll ring back. If it was work, he'll let his fingers do the walking through the yellow pages. Some other jerk's probably got the job of dismantling chats with brick by brick and transporting it to Florida by now. Could have set us up for life, that could. You're getting neurotic. So would you be getting neurotic if we had you for a partner? No, straight up, kill me. How can we run a business if we're not here to run it, eh? We are here. Now we're here, yeah. But when we're out on a job, Curly, my son, in no sense of the word can we said to be here, right? Which means there's nobody to answer the phone or take messages, which means we lose out on work, mate. All right, I concede you've got a point. But at last, it's percolated. It's always percolated. I just don't see the point of having a nervous breakdown over something we can do nothing about. So what do other firms do? Hey? Other firms, what can afford them, have secretaries, answer phones, all manner of sophisticated devices. <laughs> We can't even afford a kettle that works. Thanks, Doug. That's uh, 96, please. Hello, love. Hello, love. Is Rita Faircroft in there? Not yet, sir. I expect you to be at the shop if you want to. Oh, no. I'll hang on here, I think. Give us a pint of bitter, will you? Have you got anything to eat? I've been uh, flat hunting all morning. Hungry job is that. Hot pot? Lovely, thanks. Betty, another hot pot, love, while you're at it. OK. Any luck? Uh, well, there's a couple of places. The best one's in Ashdale Road. Needs a lot doing to it, but it's got the sort of space I need, you know. Hey, Glow, Ashdale Road, isn't that where you are, love? Yeah, why? Hey, what number? 41. Well, not all of it. It's a big old converted house. I don't believe it. He's been to see a flat there this morning. Hey, kid, looks like you could be neighbours, eh? Well, I haven't made my mind up yet. The landlord's a bit of a swine, you know, and the hot water can be dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so were you? You're trying to put him off or something? Listen, Dumbo, I wouldn't mind having him on the other side of my position wall, or on my side come to that. It's for you, love. Oh, that smells good. How's that youngster of yours getting on? I keep in touch, you know, through Rita. Oh, she's all right, thank you, yes. Oh, she's been through a very bad time, but they're very resilient at that age, you know. Well, I'll be able to keep a proper eye on her now. My firm have arranged for me to uh, be based here in Manchester, you see. Oh, well, you'll be a little family again. Well, I hope so. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth. Teenage girls are something of a mystery to me. I mean, when it comes to understanding them, talking their language, I'm a dead loss. <laughs> Don't worry, love. I reckon everybody is. Apart from other teenage girls. Darling. Do you know a girl called Susan? She says she knows you. Susan? Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't mean little Sue Clayton, do you? She works in a bakery down Everton Street. Yeah, that'll be her. Little pest with big ideas. You used to live down the road. Her sister had a thing with her. Well, more than a thing. Oh, big drama, really. Why in the road? I went for an interview there. I got chatting while they were waiting. She says it's not bad, but she can't see herself making Eccles cakes for the rest of her life. Oh, nice one, nice one. I like Eccles cakes. Oh, well, in that case, I'll definitely take the job then. If they offer it to me. Why? Wouldn't you, any room? I suppose so. <coughs> There's something to do. Only sometimes I get that cheesed off. I, I wake up in the morning and I wonder why I bother getting up. What's it to get up for? Me. I'm serious, Kev. It's all right for you. You've got a job you like. I haven't even got a job. Oh, you ought to be with Brian when he's in one of his moods. You 
You know what I mean. At the end of the day, you can look at that car and say, that's working, that is, and it's all down to me. What will I have to say? I did some shopping for my mum. Peel five pound of spuds. Mooch round Arndale Centre for two hours and bought a pair of leg warmers. Oh, yeah, dead satisfying that is. Oh, so it'll turn up. I wish people would keep saying that. One minute, though. Well, my look, when I'm 95 and riddled with arthritis like my Auntie Gracie, I'll get offered a job as a trainee bluebell girl. Uh, I hope not. And I don't want you swanning off to Paris wearing nothing but half an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would stop me, wouldn't you? You're a typical selfish male. So? I know which side me ankle cake's buttered. <laughs> I thought I might pop us here on Sunday. As the coach goes to Derby, you know, from outside Spencer's news agent. Yeah, that's something new. I wouldn't mind coming with your cock if I could get somebody to stand in here. I'd have to phone her Joni, though, to see Mrs Walker's up to seeing us both at once. <laughs> yeah, could be a bit overfacing for anybody, could that? Yeah. I hope somebody's cracked it. Gloria. David. Oh, me again. I didn't expect to see you so soon. Well, I was in the area, so I thought I'd pop in, you know. See how much I enjoyed last night. Me too. Really? <laughs> In that case, I was wondering, when's your next night off? Tomorrow. No, it's not. It's Sunday. Tomorrow's sooner than Sunday, right, Petal? Side suits me better. Betty, would you serve this gentleman? Certainly. Yeah. Okay. Like okay. Do yeah. Are you trying to get me fixed up? You've got it. Eliminate the opposition. That's my motto. You like him? You go for him, Auntie Bet says. You know some of Betty Kim mm -hmm. When I got this job, I reckoned there'd be a few advantages to being a boss. I must admit, playing Cupid weren't the first one that sprang to my mind. <laughs> right, question for you. Yeah, you can buy me a cornet. I'll have one with a double raspberry. How do you feel about June bribes? Oh, I think they're smashing. Especially if they're wearing those frilly little garters. <laughs> No, seriously. I've been thinking, maybe we should talk about setting a date. What, for the wedding? No, for taking parachute lessons. <laughs> it's just that you haven't mentioned it for a while. Well, I was waiting for you to do that. I mean, you're the one that's getting all the flack from home. Yeah, I know. I can't pretend it's been easy. But I think they're settling down to it. I think my dad is becoming reconciled to the inevitable now. Is he? You sure he's not being more amenable because he's got you back under his roof and he's hoping that they'll get me out of your system. No, why should he think that? He knows I'm not seeing anybody else and he knows I'm still wearing this. Yeah, but what's he going to say when you say that we made a date? Never mind about him. What about you? Do you really want to marry me, Michael Vernon Baldwin? Or if a girl actually pins you down to it, will you turn tail and run? God damn it, I've forgotten my running shoes. So it's still on then, is it? Why wait till June? Tomorrow's not soon enough for me, my darling. Right, I'll tell them then. What about tomorrow? Oh, June. Believe it or not, there's one or two things to do. I always thought white weddings were a lot of romantic tosh. Now it's coming to my own, I'm quite looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. Let's hope we're not the only ones. Uh, give us a couple of large cornets, will you, mate? Yeah, she's through in the back. Oh, thanks. Hello, love. Hello. I thought you might come in the Rovers. I oh. waited in there a bit. <laughs> I got some sandwiches from next door. Oh. I don't always go booze in at dinner time, you know. Mind you, she would if I let her. She always has a go at you, Mavis, doesn't she? Oh, she does. I'm used to it. I bet you could thump her sometimes, couldn't you? Hey, now you. I could do without you encouraging insurrection amongst my minions. Um, was it about last night you wanted to see me? Well, yes, I think we ought to talk about it. How was she this morning? Sulky. Well, I'll have to deal with that. Uh, there's something else come up, though. Um, I've had a bit of news this morning. Oh. Gazette in here? Yes, just come in. Well, it is. My firm have agreed to base me here in Manchester, so long as I can still serve as my old area. So, look, um, why don't you come round to the house tonight? After we've finished here, and I can sort it out with you. All right, love, I will do. Yes, I'll see you later. Hold on one second. Now then, young sir. Box of drawing pins, please. Right. Till now. Bye. Bye. Yeah, love. So. Thank you. Cheers. Hi, right, kid. 
How's it going? Oh, rotten. Just looking through jobs in here. I mean, they're underqualified or overqualified. How can you be overqualified? You've done now. Tar, thanks for reminding me. Well, what I mean by that is that you've not been to college or anything, have you? Of course not, but a lot of them say school leavers are not exactly that either, am I? They want kids so they can pay kids' wages. Here, I've got an idea. Bet you have. It's a job I need. You're not giving me credit for having any finer feelings. All right, then. Convince me. Why is this young female person so cynical, eh? Hey? Maybe she's just naturally suspicious. Or maybe she's heard about your reputation. Come on, sweetheart. We'll discuss this over a quiet cup of coffee. Mm. Oh, I'll uh, take one of those. 32p, right? Thank you. And if she has heard about my reputation, she'll have heard I know how to treat a girl. <laughs> Come on, darling. So, it's June, then. Yeah, if we can get a church and somewhere to have the reception. We'll have to get our skates on, though. Will you help me, Deirdre? What with? Well, the arrangements. Choosing a dress and that. I mean, I want Tracy to be my bridesmaid. It's just that, uh, well, I know it's a bit of an awkward situation asking you, in view of, um... But, you see, I haven't got anybody else. I could ask my gran and I know she'd be down like a shot, but she's a bit old-fashioned. I'd much rather it was you. You see, the thing is that, in spite of everything, or maybe because of it, I feel closer to you than I do to anybody. Well, except Mike, that is. So will you help me? I'd be glad to, love. And it won't be too difficult for you? <laughs> the only difficulty being dealing with your dad. Does he talk about it to you? No, not recently. I think he's taking a let sleeping dogs lie sort of attitude. Ah, oh, well, he knew it had to come to this. I mean, those were the conditions I came back on. Mm. I know. I think he was hoping that, given time, you'd change your mind. Yeah, well, I haven't. Oh, I can see that. So, what would you advise me to do? What shall I say to him? Just tell him what you've told me. That you still love Mike and that you've decided to get married in the summer. And if he blows his top? Well, then, maybe you've finally got to make a choice. Which of them means most to you? Yeah, but... They both mean everything to me. Oh, God, is that the time? I'm sorry, love. I'll have to dash. Right, Mr Devlin, yeah, I've got that. Number 16. Yeah, How does 9 o'clock tomorrow morning suit you? This is where it all happens. Fine. Thank I'll you. see you then. Bye-bye, then. That was Mr Devlin. Oh, yeah? Who's he, then? The bloke that rang this morning. I told you he'd ring back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're always right, aren't you? Have you fixed this yet, or what? Uh, try it and see. You try it and see. I'm too young and lovely. What did he want? Well, it wasn't Chatsworth. Paving stones. Oh, no. A lot of them. He's building a new patio. What's wrong with paving stones? Nothing, sweetheart, if you're sat on them and, and a sun lounger with a long, cool drink in your mitt. Plenty if you're the poor bloke that's got umped the flaming things about. Never mind. Be good for your muscles. It's not the muscles I'm worried about, darling. Right, then. To your coffee. I'll have a coffee, please. Curly, the lady wants a coffee. You make it. She's your visitor. Correction, sunshine. She's nobody's visitor. She's our new employee. What? Yeah. She needs a job. We need a phone sitter. Put the two together and bingo, they're both suited. Hey, hang about. You never said out about me working in here. Well, what's wrong with working here, mate? I mean, it's good conditions, nice sociable hours. Play your cards, right? You get to keep the executive loop. How much? Quid an hour. Get more than that charring. Well, go charring, then. Money in me hand, right? We don't want to start getting involved in no PAYE and stamps and that, do we, Curl? Now, just a minute, Terry. Just a minute. Uh, as joint and equal partner in this business, I think I should have my say. So say. Since when did we decide that we could afford to take on staff? Since we started losing work by not getting messages. But we're not losing work. Paving stones, remember? None that we know of. How much have we lost that we don't know of, eh? Right, sweetheart, the kettle's boiling. Now, you make yourself at home. Now, anybody phones in, calls, wants us to do out, the answer is yes. As long as it's legal. So long as it's legal. You, uh, you just use your pretty little loaf, eh? Why, where are you two going? Gonna shift some geezer's old storage tank. Told you, dead glamorous world you're moving into. Oh, promise is a promise. Oh. There you go. Ah. Sorry, Spider. Secretary's perks. See ya. Bye. Tell you. 
You're late. I had to go somewhere. Well, your bag's there. It's all ready for you. Rita not here? No, she went home. She was feeling rotten, if you must know. She's not been good all day. What's been them sausages we had last night? It was nothing to do with sausages. She was upset about you. Oh, really? Yes, really. Look, I've tried to keep out of this, but I can't stand by and see you behaving the way you are to Mrs Fairclough. That woman's been goodness itself to you. She took you in, she gave you a I home. I never asked her to. Oh, didn't you? Oh, I suppose you didn't run away from the home that they sent you to, leaving Mr Worthington with no alternative but to find you a foster parent. I mean, Mrs Fairclough didn't have to take you in, you know. She was a lot of extra work for her, let alone the aggravation. She's never said no. Oh, no, well, she wouldn't, but I'm saying it. Nothing mattered to her, none of that mattered, just so long as you were all right. She did it willingly, and this is the way you thank her. Look, I've got nothing against her. She's all right. I just wish she'd not got so pally with me dad, that's all. Well, why not? Why shouldn't they be friendly if they get on together? What harm does it do you? I don't know. I just want it to be me and him, that's all. I've not had a dad all these years. I don't want nobody else, not even her. That's why I went. You went where? You're soaking wet, child. Where have you been? To the cemetery. I took my mum some flowers. I sat there hoping she could help me sort things out. She used to be good at understanding things, my mum. But I was just being stupid, weren't I? She's not there, is she? There's nobody I can rot and talk to, nobody! Pie for afters, I made the pastry. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Can't you just? Uh, how long will tea be? Uh, about a quarter of an hour. Only, uh, I was going to go out afterwards. Uh, Dad, I've got something to tell you. Deirdre already knows. Tracy, let's, uh, let you and me go in the kitchen, darling, see how the pie's doing. Not my fucking secrets. You're always trying to get rid of me. Don't them. be cheeky now. Come on, do as you're told. I didn't want to tell you at the office. Besides, we were too busy anyway. But I saw Mike at lunchtime, and we've decided on a June wedding. I see. Well, isn't there another date that wants some thinking about first? What date? Your 21st, yours and Peter's. What about it? Well, I always wanted to give you both a big slap up do on your coming of age. Yeah, but that was 18. Uh, yeah, but you were in Glasgow then, and uh, anyway, that's a newfangled idea to an old traditionalist like me. 21's a big one. Hey. What do you say? Well, why don't we combine the two? I and mean, I could get married on my 21st birthday. That would make it really something special. And I'm sure Peter wouldn't mind. Love, it's your birthday next month. There's hardly time to organise a party and a wedding. Let's take one thing at a time, eh? What party? What wedding? Look, I said upstairs, miss, and clean up. It's all right. We've sorted it out now. What party? Can I come? Well, Dad's arranged a special 21st birthday party for me. But I wouldn't dream of going without having my special sister there. Come on, let's go and get washed. Won't be five minutes. said anything to me about it. Big occasion. Always plan to celebrate the twins' 21st. What's the father for? Have you eaten? Oh, I'll have something later on, love. Where's Jenny? At your pals. Well, I thought it best. Well, sorry about last night. It wasn't your fault. No, no, I should have seen that coming. I shouldn't have let you in for all that. It's not me I'm worried for. What are you going to do about Jenny? Well, I've already done something in that direction. Oh, you've already spoken to her then? What about me moving here? No, I'm going to tell her tonight. No, not that. About her behaviour. Alan, you'll have to have a word with her. I've tried, but well, you're a father. Yes, I will do, love, but not now. She's, uh, she's been through a hard time lately, you know. Don't you think I don't know that? But you'll have to draw the line somewhere, though. I mean, people aren't going to make allowances for her for the rest of her life, you know. I suppose she did go a bit over the top last night. A bit yeah. over the top? She was damn rude. And I hope you're going to tell her that, for her sake, as well as ours. I don't think that would be a good idea, Rita. You don't? You think she can just get away with murder whenever she feels no, like well, it? Of course I don't, but it was seeing you and me together that sparked all that off. So what I've decided is that for the time being, I've got to put her first. Meaning what? Meaning that it's about time we got out from under your feet. There's something else I've got to tell you, too. I found us a flat. Ah, oh, yeah. You don't let the grass grow, do you? I've got a lot of time to make up, love. So, uh, 
When is all this going to happen, then? As soon as possible. What's the matter? I thought you'd be pleased. You always said you didn't want this to be a permanent arrangement. Yes, yes, I know I did. Uh, well, perhaps it was selfish of me. See, I saw myself as a sort of bridge, helping Jenny cross from her old life to her new, giving her a sense of security, a sense of belonging for a while. As it stands, all I've done is come between you both. No. Oh, yes, I have. You can't wait to rush her away, and she can't wait to go. Of course you should be together. That's only right. Of course you should. But I didn't think, when the time came, it had happened like this. Sarah? Certainly, Mrs. Holt. No problem. Yeah, look, Thursday morning, 9 o'clock sharp. Yeah. Yes, I've got your address. It's um, 23 Elm Street. Yeah. All right, then. Thanks. Bye. What are you doing here? Working. What's it look like? Did you fancy a coffee? Well, I'd best hang on while lads get back. Well, uh, when did all this happen? Well, I bumped into Terry after I left you. We needed somebody here. I've got nothing else to do till something better turns up, so... It's a genuine Windsor chair. It's only fit for flaming firewood, mate. We can get it for a tenner. I can give ten pence for it. And flog it for fifty. Oh, what is the point? You never listen to anything I say, do you? I don't know why I bother. You know something? You sound more like a wife every day. Oh. Right, mate. Right. How's it going, sweetheart? Not been too lonely without me, I hope. No, I find things to do. I've uh, tidied out your cupboards. Oh, and a Mrs. Holt coming. Wants to move her fireplace Thursday morning. I've written it all down on here. And, um, oh, a man coming, asking if he could shift some dead trees. I've told him you'd let him know. His number's here and all. Good girl. You see? She's earning a keep already. Mm. Oh, we're paying her overtime. Hey, It's gone six. Oh, why? Yeah, you trot along then, darling. Oh, right. See you in the morning. Be a change to come in here and have something worth looking at other than Curly's ugly mug. Right, I'll uh, see you then. Yeah, and um, we'll settle up at the end of the week. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Smashing. I'd rather let it mount up anyway. Mm -hmm. Come on, Kev. You can see me on. You're a nutter. What's up with you? She's got us work already. A debatable point. We probably would have got it anyway. But what about him? Kevin? I mean, he's not deliriously happy about the arrangement either. Well, that is tough, isn't it? Because she's a free agent and she's entitled to earn a crust where she can. All right? Mm.